it's impossible to use trainees and low-grade operators. E. Some notes were repeated several times. Only the first of these should be played. No useful purpose is served by repeating with horns the passage that already been adequately handled by the strings. If all such redundant passages were eliminated, the concert could be reduced from two hours to 20 minutes. <laughs> and if Schubert had attended to these matters himself, he'd have probably been had time to finish his symphony. <laughs> <laughs> Now for the scientific stuff. Uh, here is the bisects. In uh, 1941, in the Channel Islands, the Germans, they, they ran out of penny posted stamps, and so they took Tuckney ones and cut them in two. That's the Tuckney bisect in, in the Channel Islands. And in 1936, okay. After the postage rate went up to uh, Tuppence, they ran out of penny postage used and the two Tuppence postage used and cut them in two. That's another bisect, and there's a raw certificate to see it has happened. Then, a long time ago, this is about 1895, the penny lilac of 1890 is in the corner letters. So if it was cancelled along the bottom, you cut off the top. And if it was cancelled on the top, you cut off the bottom and joined them together. And there's a uh, stamp made up of two and four uh, stamps pieced together. That's very economical. And then here is the, uh, of course, this, uh, this is a, what you call post office baking. There's Gladstone chopping off Queen Victoria's head. And that was posted in Bath on the 25th of September, 1884. And it's arrived in Pitlochby in Scotland the next day. That's a better service than you get today. <laughs> well, the, the post office official, yeah, that's not saying anything about it. You've got a much larger mail today. Uh, then some people went in for a post office meeting like that. A penny and a halfpenny for a penny halfpenny. That's what you call a post office meeting. And when I was a boy, about 1961, <laughs> I did the same, and my son, who just had a baby uh, this afternoon, he was at Sidcot School, Somerset, and he was sad because his, his friend had gone to New Zealand. So I said, never mind, I'll send you a letter to your Sidcot School via New Zealand. So I said, Conrad Lato, post the song, Wellington, North Island, New Zealand. And I wrote on the back, if not collected in 48 hours, please redirect to Sidcot School. <laughs> And it got to North Island, New Zealand, Wellington, and then it went to the RLB, that's the Return Letter Bank, it was unclaimed, went to the RLB, Return Letter Bank, and then came back to Sidcot School, but that time he was on holiday, and it came right back to my Caversham uh, residence. I also sent one, Conrad Lato, posted on Tokyo, Japan, and it's not collected in 40,000. Of course, you couldn't be in two places at once, in fact, he was in neither. And so this one went to Tokyo, got a Tokyo mark on the back, and it came back. That's post office basic, and not to be encouraged. <coughs> now, when the post is made with tuppence safety, if you cut the tuppence safety one in two, it would come through quite well. So, being scientific, I had to follow it up, and I cut a five for the one at two tuppence safety stamps, and that came through. Now, the post had to be followed up. And I took a tenth of this time and cut it to four, and four tuck and shape and done. <laughs> <laughs> and two of them came through. But I had to wait five days for the other two, and I had to pay five pence on each of them. <laughs> 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 when the post did pay, went up to Thrupple, I took a Thrupple one and cut it to two in London on the 8th and 10th of February, and that came through. And then I sent two from Reading. You have to spread the load. You don't want to put them all in the post, same post office. And two were ready the same day, and they all came through. But they cancelled them with a special slogan and said, Buy stamps and books. <laughs> they had a bit of a, a, bit of a hint. <laughs> and then when the post of went up to six, when the post of was up, I took a six and they cut it to, and I had to pay on both of them. And I thought, well, it's a bit unfriendly cutting the Queen's head in two. So I thought, I'll cut the Queen out. And St. Harris Truppins and the Framus Truppins, which I did. I said Harris Truppins and the Framus Truppins, 
and the road country the regulations that appear in the board. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, well, what's the amount of a stamp will they take? So I took a threepenny one and cut the corners of it, the operations of it, and then I cut a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And the first four they wrote by stamps and groups, and after that they gave up. And I cut it right down, and I think they go by the colour and the old one. <laughs> 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 and they went up the four minutes that was repeated. They go by the colour, you see. If you cut off and stuff, it's a treasurer here, if he wants to save money, Concentrate today. <laughs> no, then the eighth penny stamp there is a, a, a cut into a two-fourth stamp. That was all right. So the trouble after that was what to do. So I had to trisect the shilling stamp. So I trisected the shilling stamp and two came through out of three. So that wasn't bad value. I thought the post office can't make up their mind. I'll have to repeat that experiment. So I sent another three through the post and they made up their mind. I had to pay in the whole lot of them. <laughs> And then when, the, when it was human rights year, the five-penny stamp was all right, cut in two. The ten-penny stamp, the two five-penny stamps was all right. And then the next job was to get a price text, and I had to one and three-penny stamp and cut it in three. And one came through, and I think they used the cork out of the bottle to obliterate the other two. <laughs> then when they went on to decimals in 71, the three-penny stamp came through the post all right, five seconds. The 6 p came through as two bisects, and the 9 p was trisected and came through all right. The only trisect no one used. <laughs> <laughs> First class was the trumpet, second class was tough and shaking it. So I had to follow this up and cut the tenth knee stamp and four as four tough and shaking stamp. And two of them came through and arrived the same day, second class, the same day as posting. And the other two came the following day, so that's the only quarter a set no new. Very valuable. <laughs> of course, in 1986, when the Queen came out in three different pictures that were on the same stamp, it, there's no necessity for three Queens on the same stamp, so I sent each Queen separately, and all the six Queens came through. These are tri-sets, all came through quite all right, it's just the Queen by herself. There's no need for three queens on the same stamp. That's the duplication. Of course, if you had a, a penny hitney stamp already, or a cup hitney stamp, when they demonetized the hitney stamp, you had to use a, a penny stamp bisected. And here's a five for hitney on a, a registered envelope. I had to make it up with a half because there was no hitney stamp. And they came through. Some people, even the uh, wrote Douglas Lato London and took a threepenny stamp and on the end here they took the middle of a, a red cup and and put a green truck, a red blue threepenny stamp and sent Douglas Lato London and they said we will, will you please return the cover it is required for official purposes for the head postmaster of Reading he's going to get somebody into trouble <laughs> eventually I traced the, the writing of this stamp to that girl sitting in the front row there <laughs> And uh, so I thought I better not send it to the head postmaster. So I kept it. And then there's my son, he, he made four stamps, chopped them in two and made a pattern. So I wrote to them and said, You bisect this stamp, why can't I? And they said, Dear sir, in reply to your letter, the regulations governing the use of bisected or torn stamps is contained in the post office, Inland Post Warren, 1955, part three. Paragraph 10, Section 4, which states that no stamp or impression of a stamping machine which is imperfect or mutilated shall be used in payment to denote payment of posts or fees. We do know that in 56, some often facing local shortage of penny labels, following an increase in 45 seconds, company labels used there. This action was, however, unofficial. That's how they got out of it. Now, let's put you on another experiment. The University of Leicester undertook to find out the distribution of fluid waste from the British Titan paintworks at Grimsby. And thousands of cars in waterproof containers were thrown into the River Humber at Grimsby, and they all floated out and landed on the various beaches. And, and there was a map on the back of the various beaches, and you put a cross where they, you found it on the beach, and you put it in the envelope, and it came back to Leicester. But unfortunately, these letters 
were three and three quarters by two and a half. And at that date, the minimum size were by four by two and three quarters, so below the minimum size. And secondly, these letters lay on the beach so long, the postage rate went up before they were collected. <laughs> and a visit by an IRA post office official said none of these letters were going to be delivered. That caused, caused grave concern. And when the importance of the work was pointed out, they let them all pass without any postage or dues. This old lady got one here. And she, she took it out of its waterproof container and put a, a cross on the back where she found it, stuck it in the waterproof container. When I got the post office, the post took it out and hand cancelled it and I put it in the waterproof container. And that arrived at the Leicester University in its waterproof container. <laughs> now I had to work out this scientifically, so I put a small letter to myself, and then a smaller letter to myself, and a smaller letter to myself, and a smaller letter to myself. And after that, I, I took these down and they wouldn't take them. I said, well, in that case, it's a parcel. There's no minimum size for parcels. And they said, but that's two shillings. So there's a one and six and a six in here, and my name in the bottom. And there's two shillings overlapping, and my name on the back. And they accepted them and cancelled with the parcel cancellation. And I was waiting for them for the next day, of course. It didn't come up. I was a bit disappointed. Of course, 11 o'clock, a four-ton lorry comes along. <laughs> I paid for parcels. Parcel service, and I got it. A fourth-time lorry came along, and when the first came, there was really delivered. <laughs> and there's a little letter without the stamp on it, and I had to pay sixpence on it, and I said, I don't think it's fair to be cancelled sixpence on it, because the, the stamp obviously fallen off, the wavy lines don't go over the margin. I don't think it's quite fair to charge sixpence. Fellow, after it had been Frank and Tyler Rothschild, I'd be pleased to get the sixpence on principle and the card with it. And the postmaster, thank you for writing, will get in touch with me again as soon as possible. Many wrote, Dear Sir, in reply to your letter of the 12th of July, please find six, six, six worth of stamps in respect to an incorrectly served card postcard addressed to you. As requested, I'm running for returning the postcard. The annoyance and inconvenience occasion is regretted. Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> now, here's some labels that are not stamps at all. Here's National Safety Certificate. Uh, here's some more 26 Philatelic Congress labels used as postage stamps. Got a slogan on it. Take no chances. <laughs> and then here's a doctor's prescription charge used to post stamp. Here's a child's crippled stamp. Here's another rather nice one. Yeah, I sent it to myself actually. Hey, the Lord bless the APPs in Francis. And I sent to that this was done. That came through to me all right. <laughs> now for the ladies, green shield stamps are all right. Two of them. Especially the Thames. The red ones in London are all right. I know there's some new pink ones at the garages. I haven't tried them out. No, if you're using stamps as a reader's digest, you've got to, to use psychology, you see? And if you use a yes, please, is all right. <laughs> yes, please, is all right in Paris, and yes, please. Yes, but, it's no good, you've got to be on it, and no thank you, you've got to be on it. So always use yes, please, out of reader's digest. <laughs> There's a, a tiger in your tank, uses the postage stamp. And there, there's one with the queen taken out and hair hit, but we did. I'll forget about that one. And then here's another one, a postman's pack. Postman's pack, that, that, that came through. It's got the cancellation here, it says, the time to send her. However, uh, that was all right. Then, when the new uh, is, uh, cancellations come out on a lot of these circulars, you get a lot of these big things like that. And then that usually cancelled. You can cut these off and use them again quite often. And then the first and second class mail, like so, they, they use the cancellings along the top. And that leaves the bottom free. So you cut off the bottom and send it by itself, and that comes through. Here's one there. The top cancelled and the bottom cut off and used again, and that comes through all right. So that's a great economy. And then, of course, these Prama labels, they're all right. Pass the labor on. They are taken as meter marks, and they can, they're not very, very seldom cancelled. There's a cancelled one, which is very rare. They can be used as often as you like. <laughs> now, here's another... This is a great saving of money. Here's another thing. I understand you require the general post office standard ideal home exhibition. Which stamps in this country are valid? The answer is all stamps in Edward the seven. As George V today are valid. So I sent a... Uh, 
Queen Victoria, George the Sixth, George the Fifth, Edward the Seventh, and Queen Victoria, and they came through. And when the forces rate went up the Trappers, I added Edward the Eighth, and they came through. So I went right back to 1887. He said the stamp came in 1887, and that came through. <coughs> and then I said six of these. Italy stamps of 1887 and they came through. Then I went right back to 1881 and three penny lilacs through the course. And in 1872, four penny stamps, slightly, slightly faulty, and a specimen slightly faulty, both came through. So I had to go right back to 1870 and I sent the 1870 Hickley stamps and a little bit of revenue stamp and they came through. And then I sent three penny reds, mint penny reds, and they came through. So at the very beginning, you could buy a penny black or a Mulrady envelope, and the Mulrady envelope's never been demonetized. And there, I bought a, a penny mint Mulrady envelope, and put on the tuppence to make up the trappin, and that is a Mulrady envelope that came through the post in 1962. That's the, the last Mulrady known to be accepted, 122 years late, and it came through the post. And then I had to do the impossible, and put a, strip, a three penny black on, and this is the last known use of the penny black in 1862. Now, for the, for the treasurer again, if you put the stamps in a row, you always get one, one or two off. I piled them up to save, to save weight so that we get the meter on, and then you pile them up and so all the ones behind there are safe. So here they are there, the penny, if you stamp, get one off. When the rate went up to five, then you have to push that along a little bit and you often get one off. Or you can push it vertically like that and you often get a penny off instead of a half But on average, you get about a penny off. The alternative is to push the stamp down there. And the cancelled bang, cutting over the cancelled bang, and this is twice. So if you put it there or there, you have a good chance of getting it off. You can't get it off by the machine. There or there. Now here is uh, another method. I've invented, you cover it with sealer tape. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have two layers, otherwise you spoil the stamp. You have two layers of sealer tape, and if it slips on there, try to redirect it, and it's going to be cancelled. So I just didn't do it again, and it came through all right. Then the alternative, you see, for a Scotsman, you've got to buy gum to stick these back on again once you've soaked them off. So this is a Scottish method. And you put them on like that, and you leave the bottom loose. <laughs> and so you tear off whatever is not needed. You get the picture? And that saves the gum. Or you put them on like that to mesmerize them and keep the rest at the back for a rainy day. <laughs> now, there's one other method that I've invented. It's the transparent washable envelope. That can be used as often as you like. I'll just let you see that now. Here is a transparent washable envelope there. Here it is. And you can take it out of its envelope like that, it slips out, and all the cancellation is on the envelope. On the, on the and so uh, you can just wash it and, and put it back in again and send it again as often as you like. Now the alternative to that is to use your the top of your income tax forms <laughs> on Her Majesty's service. You put on Her Majesty's service on the letter and that always comes through. But of course you don't get enough income tax forms, maybe fortunately. <laughs> and so I, uh, I got my secretary to write OHMS on the top of the envelope, but it didn't come through at the pay on it. So I thought, well, I'll put on large letters, O-H-M-S. You've got to be definite in this world. O-H-M-S in big letters. And it came through all right. But they put P-K-T on it. What does that mean? Anyway, so I thought, well, I'll better follow this up. And I put P-K-T on my name. And that came through. <laughs> I don't know why. And then I eventually got my second right post with paid on it, and that came through. <laughs> <laughs> and then here is uh, the Guardian Royal Exchange PID 3 post tip switch. So I just wrote PID 3 post. I don't know what that means. And that came through. <laughs> now, again, you've got to be deaf in this world. And I wrote HIP. You put on a hippie stamp and just put HIP on, on three of them. And two of them came through out of the three. 
It can anything, man. HIV is an old Scottish proverb, I honesty is poverty. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we came through out the street. And when this one didn't come through, I, I was through my support to the post office and took my hate me stamp off and put HIV without any, in bigger writing still, without any hate me stamp on, and that came through. And then I put another one, HIV. That's a, an old Scottish problem, his haste is vulgar. And that came through the post all right. And, uh, but it took me a week to get it. I don't know why they were so slow. <laughs> and then when, when uh, David Gentleman did the, the stamps of uh, Churchill, he, he gave me these two signed by himself. And I thought, well, why should Churchill be on a stamp and not me? So I did a picture of myself and had it big and smaller, and there is me on a stamp. And that is the only imperfect one known to <laughs> These were punched out with a leather puncher, and they came through the post. And uh, I, I was speaking at a, <coughs> I was speaking at a, well, here's, here's some biceps again. People don't take me seriously and make pictures like that at Christmas time. I'm not These are all biceps and stuff. And uh, when I was speaking at the, at the, uh, at the rating, the economist there, I was telling them how to save money, and I showed them these stamps, and showed them how to save money, and I said, I, here's a picture here, got a bit stuck down with the seal of tape. Here's me and my wife, and here's the stamp that came through the post, I showed them that one. And a local uh, post office, the, the, post, the, the rating post asked me, if they could borrow that one. I said, oh, sure, borrow it one. And they put it in the writing post. And the uh, wrote here, notice anything odd about this stamp. And here's me in the writing post. I dropped the stamps on the PO's, DPO's dignity and so on. And after that, it got on to the Reuters. And I got 180 letters from all over the world asking for mint block to four. <laughs> <laughs> And it was just punched out with a leather puncher. <laughs> and then I found it, in, in, uh, I got them from British Bechuana land and New Zealand and everywhere. And then I found it written up in German and Swedish. And, and then I went into my dentist and I picked up a blocky French ma magazine. And there was me in the middle of this magazine. Le doc I did, couldn't read it all, because it was in French. It said, Le Doctor Latoua is très riche et très excentrique. <laughs> <laughs> And so there was 180 letters, and uh, all about my postage stuff. So I think that will do. Uh, that is the scientific collection for the treasurer. <laughs> okay. I did.